there's not a lot of understanding of your design process outside of the people that have worked in your office. Um, and perhaps, you know, compared to say, uh, Larry Halper and Lori Olin, who just, their, their, their drawings are so much in the public realm in terms of um, conveying to a broader populace what your process is. Um, how, how do you answer that question in terms of process in your work and illustrating it? Well, our, our jobs don't have a consistent style um, with these few kind of idiosyncrasies like flatness and seriality and so forth. But they're, they are, they're not all flat. They don't all have seriality. Many of them do, but they don't all. So why is that? Well, Stan White used to say, well, you know, here's the site and here's the plan and they have to fit like a glove. So I think our work comes out of the problem and the place and the functions and therefore those are, those, that combination of things is rarely repeated even if the program's the same, the site's different, the climate's different, the culture's different, something. So that's why they're all different. Which doesn't mean that we go about them differently. We still study the site. We still try to find out, you know, how we can satisfy a program. We do it in what I call minimalism, which is different than sculptural minimalism, but we do it in trying to make fewer moves and trying to make sure that each thing does three or four things. I was thinking about, uh, uh, you know, complexity uh, and my, my form of that little phrase would be um, simplicity with complexity, not complexity that's simple. So it's much more of a goal than it is a process because each of these things, I mean, for God's sake, I've never had a job where you dig the stone up out of the site, you know? I mean, that's, it, but it comes along. You're not going to say, oh, no, I don't want to do that. That doesn't fit my pattern. <laughs> um, so, and I think that people who have repeated themselves, Larry does that, did that. Um, Tommy did that. It means that not everyone is going to be as good as every other one or as essential because I think, and that's the reason I'm not, I mean, I've been a defender of, of Roosevelt, but um, I think it's not one of his great projects because it's simply taking this and taking this and taking this and there it all is, done beautifully. Um, but my example would be go over to Vietnam, not very well done. The landscape is terrible, trees are dying, it's a great thing. If you're gonna defend, defend that one. I, have to, I mean, hate to see Roosevelt go, I'm not trying to get rid of it, but <laughs> I wouldn't put my energy into it. So I think it's, it's staying with that thing of trying to figure out what the site is doing and what you can do to fit right with that and make something of that. You know, you and I were talking about climate change earlier today, and I'm just thinking about from your perspective, um, with this sweeping panorama of your, your experiences, for the people that are students here tonight, um, in terms of the opportunity that is before us today. Well, the landscape architecture, the way it's constituted then and now, um, is from time to time, there'll, there'll be a point where we are positioned intellectually, but we're not positioned physically. What Hid was trying to do was get those two things together. Um, most of these things have rolled through us. We've often seen them early. We've very rarely been able to ride that horse. Um, about 20, 25 years ago, after looking at my own 20, first 25 years where I was trying to get on that horse um, and felt that in the aggregate we had failed and decided that it was probably the examples which were more important, that they could be moved intellectually rather than trying to take on the whole problem, deal with everything. Um, and I went more and more to the point of trying to do elegant things because they were more persuasive 
and to use that to do more things, but also to use that to, to pose an alternative rather than trying to solve the whole problem at once. And I know McCarg had that problem. I mean, many people have had that problem. Uh, so I guess I'd gone to the point where I felt that the artists had a better handle on solution in terms of producing evidence rather than solving everything. And I must say I've come away from the idea and I've, I'm maybe a little cynical about people who tell you we're gonna save the world. Um, I think that that's probably more religious than real. And, uh, and uh, it's very hard, at least in the world that I've seen and the complexity of it that I've seen, it's very hard to actually do enough to make a huge difference um, in a quantitative way. But in a qualitative way, you can point the way, you can say, look, this is a better way of doing it, or this is a lot better way of doing it. And there's certainly evidence that we have the capacity, whether we can handle everything, or whether everything will ever be able to be handled. I mean, look at the numbers. Mm -hmm. Now, Hid didn't know that those numbers were going to happen. He intuited that they were going to grow, but I think even he, if he were alive today, would be astounded at, the, at those numbers. They were simply larger than a practice or even a profession could deal with. So I know that's a little discouraging, but I, I put an awful lot more energy into doing those examples mm -hmm. and not worrying as much because I couldn't deal with it, uh, the broader issues. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that's come out of those uh, experiments and those efforts. Um, we are much more expert than we used to be. I remember when we when I first came back from from uh, Boston or Watertown to work on Foothill College, I had a civil engineer and I had a uh, irrigation consultant. Those were my those were all the people. Mm -hmm. And I was working at that time with some people from Skidmore, you know, and they had elegant structural engineers, mechanical engineers, kitchen experts, traffic experts, all these guys that they had. And I had a civil engineer, <laughs> downhill, and an irrigation. And that was all we had. Today, our projects have 16, 17 specialists um, who can really tell us how to go and where to go and how to get there. Um, it's much more like the architects in the 60s and 70s had. And I'm I, I really appreciate it. I don't know today how we could live without it. But uh, the expertise that's available, and that, that has come out of this explosion too. That's one of the byproducts of the explosion. And we now know how to do all those things. And we now have experts that can extend what we know. So we're in much better shape today. Whether we can solve global warming, I'm not sure. <laughs>